Hi everybody, I'm Brian Carroll, sales engineer for Barracuda Networks. Today we're going to be taking the time to look into the new upcoming features of the firmware 5.0 that will be released for the Barracuda Backup Service. Uh, you start by going to the demo site, so we can go to demo.barracuda.com and we'll scroll down and actually log into the local backup appliance and we'll say view demo. So from here we see a number of backup servers that are accessible in this interface. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on the HQ backup server, so we'll go ahead and click on that and view the stats for just that appliance. When uh, viewing the HQ backup server we see some of the uh, statistics and information regarding this server. You can see the, uh, the disk usage and uh, as well as the sources that are being backed up. Uh, the backup appliance uh, comes with all the licensing needed to back up virtually anything in your environment. There's no per server fees or per license fees to back up uh, an exchange versus SQL or anything like that. We also do local deduplication on the device, so anything that's stored in multiple areas on your network will be backed up once and help save space. And we can see that here on some of these statistics in the UI. So we see our raw data accounting for all of the uncompressed, undeduplicated data and then we see how much is actually being deduplicated on the local appliance uh, being saved in space on the, uh, the actual storage here towards the center of the screen. We then compress that data when sending it off-site, and that's what we see as our cloud replication. So we also have the cloud replication service for having the disaster recovery aspect of the solution to replicate your data to a secure off-site location. So after we get an idea of what's being backed up at the server, we can actually look at starting to add some sources. So we'll start by clicking on the Backup tab and clicking the Sources page. From here, we can see a list of all the servers that currently exist and that are currently being backed up to this backup appliance. We see that there's currently a couple of virtual machines in place, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, we can look at uh, the Virtual Server 2 by clicking the Edit button, and uh, it's extremely easy to add the source. We just give it a computer description, and then a computer name, which is going to be the fully qualified name or the IP address. Uh, the computer type in this case is going to be VMware, and then it asks us for the credentials for that appliance. From here, we can also see what exactly is going to be backed up underneath this host machine. Uh, we can go into the sources and actually select the items and see which available guests are running on this machine to be backed up. And we can do that by drilling into the host machine and seeing that these guest machines are currently running. So once we've uh, added the virtual sources to be backed up, we go now to how to restore these items. So we'll uh, switch tabs here and look at the local restore browser that will be available in the 5.0 firmware. So we click on the virtual machine and drill into the actual server to be, that's being backed up. We then click on the actual guest machine, and up top we see an option that allows us to view all revisions of that server. So we can see exactly which point in time we want to restore from. Uh, right now I'm going to go back up a level uh, to view the most recent revision and restore that revision. So when we click the restore button, and then it gives us the options of where to restore the server to. We can go to the original location, an alternate existing location, or a new location altogether. When we select that option, it gives us the, or it asks us for authentication to access that new location, as well as what we want to name that server. So now that we've seen the option to restore the entire server image, that doesn't always happen in your day-to-day -day lives. So in the new 5.0 firmware, we give the ability to browse the VMDK file itself. So we click on the server, click on the VMDK file, click on the partition, and then we can actually drill down into the directory as if the server were running. So we'll click on Windows, and we're going to go into the web folder, wallpaper, Windows wallpaper, and from here we see a JPEG image. We can click to download that file. Once it's downloaded, we can then open that file, and we now see the wallpaper image here. So now that we've seen the ability to restore a single file from a server image, Another new and exciting feature in the 5.0 firmware is we give the ability to recover an entire guest machine. We spent some time thinking about how we want to do this, and first I'm going to touch base on how we decided not to go about doing this. We're not going to keep a live snapshot of the server due to the amount of hard drive space required to do so. 
also with that method, it doesn't take advantage of our deduplication technology that's built into the Barracuda backup server. We also decided not to restore a full image because of the time required to do so, and we want to give you the best solution to get the server back up and running as quickly as possible. It turns out that the VM host is the easiest thing to recover. You can actually boot that straight off of a, a USB thumb drive. So we deal with the hard part, getting the actual data back. Our solution is also optimized for storage, so that's really where we shine. That's what we do best. What we are doing is giving the ability to boot any revision within your retention policy and use the backup appliance as the data store. We also serving up deduplicated parts as they're needed by the virtual server. Now let's see how live boot works. All right, so we click the live boot option. In this case, we're going to restore to an alternate location. Enter in the credentials for the access to the server. Put in the password. We're going to load the data centers and select the data center and the host set we want to restore to. We can also rename the machine. And we'll say boot VM. Let's see how long this takes. So there's a number of use cases that we can uh, use this type of uh, restore for. Uh, in case you were to lose SAN, SAN connectivity, maybe uh, due to some faulty uh, firmware upgrades or maybe some hardware issues. And also, uh, if there's a, a Windows update or some file system corruption on the machine, or if you just want to do some testing outside of your production environment. Lastly, you can also, if you wanted to recover quickly for minimum downtime and wanted to maybe restore during your recovery window. All right, we can see that the server is now up and running. It took about three minutes to, to boot up. Uh, let's take a look at vCenter here. So when we look at this, we actually see the demo live boot is up and running, and we see it's using the BBS as the storage. So if we wanted to migrate this to your actual running environment, we can say right click on the live boot and say migrate. We have the option to change the database. We then say next and you can move it to one of the active environments and then say next and finish. Now that we've previewed some of the upcoming features of the 5.0 firmware, it's important to know that we're not going to stop here. We're going to continue to heavily develop for VMware and we're not going to stop with the local interface. We're going to continue to develop some of these features into our cloud structure. We know that some of you might not have a virtual environment currently. You might still have physical servers. You can purchase the Barracuda backup server now and back up your physical servers and know that all these features will be waiting for you when you migrate to a virtual environment. Thanks for watching. Happy backups. Where's my scotch?